acronym STURBS stands for Short Term Energy Relieving Behaviors. So what that is, is when we feel something emotional and we don't want to feel it anymore, <laughs> or we don't want to really deal with it right now, then we're gonna do something to relieve that or distract us from it. So, and it might be good things like exercise. When you start feeling something emotional, you might wanna go out for a run. And all that's great, we need the dopamine, but two hours later, that emotion comes back. That's called a short-term energy relieving behavior. It could be cleaning house, feel a lot, People tend to want to reorganize a bedroom. I know I do this when I have a big task that I'm supposed to do that's kind of making me feel emotional or insecure or fearful. I reorganize everything but the work I'm supposed to be doing, right? Could be drugs, alcohol that we're going to turn to numb it. It could be TV that we're just going to zone out and try to escape that. I don't want to feel this right now. We could put off having that conversation with somebody, that uncomfortable conversation, because we know it's gonna make us feel something really strong. We're gonna spend the whole weekend away. Traveling is another big one. Before shelter in place, a lot of people traveled, kept themselves super busy. Once shelter in place hit, you were stuck indoors and you were stuck with your thoughts and you were stuck with now having to deal with a lot of emotion and you had no place to put it, but deal with it or not. You know, again, you can still turn to something even within your own home, but eventually our bodies are not gonna be able to handle the continual stuffing of emotion. We're like a, a little volcano type of thing that the more emotion that you stuff inside and don't allow to come out and really deal with, it's gonna blow. It's going to come out, whether it's an anxiety or depression or other type of health problems, you know, migraines, gut issues, heart issues. Some, in some situations, if it's severe enough, it could be fibromyalgia or other health problems come from stress and emotional health type of thing. How do you identify if you're using a short-term energy relieving behavior and not just exercising for the sake of exercising? When you stop to pay attention to, did I go out to run because I am feeling anxious? Or did I go out to run because the person that I wanna to talk to hasn't called me yet? Or did I go out to run because there's a situation that I just don't have the mental capacity to deal with? Like there's all kinds of, I think we, we just have to be honest with ourselves of why we're doing what we're doing. I won't even say it, like sometimes I'll say, I don't feel like dealing with all of that stuff, that situation, so I'm just gonna binge watch Netflix and find a really good episode and watch all 12 <laughs> episodes <laughs> in one night. <laughs> and you know, I, I think sometimes we do just need that, that decompressing time. But eventually, if we don't stop to really be honest with ourselves and, and just identify what is making me feel what I'm feeling, we're gonna keep turning to that and it's gonna stay unresolved and continue to hurt you eventually. It really does. Like anxiety starts to build up. So a lot of anxiety issues that we have, it's frozen depression, it's frozen hurt, it's frozen anger, it's, it's frozen insecurity that we just have to take the time, love ourselves enough to, well, I'm just going to be honest about what this is instead of turning to that. You're going to feel so much better by dealing with the emotion than turning to the stirb to try and medicate it. You're going to enjoy your run so much more. You're going to enjoy your Netflix so much more because what happens after you've watched that episode, the issue's still there and now you feel the compounded, whether it's regret or compounded consequence to not dealing with that task or emotion or you know whatever that is. They eventually catch up and then, and then you feel more on top of it. So recognize the stir by being honest with why you're wanting to do it. And if the first step is, okay, I'm going to acknowledge that I do feel something about this, and I'm gonna just write it down right now. I don't have the emotional energy to actually deal with it, but I can at least verbalize 
on paper, I am hurt because my husband said something really hurtful to me today. But I don't want to go talk to him about it, even though I feel a lot about it. So I've at least acknowledged it, put it out there. Now I'm going to go watch my show because I just need to decompress. But after I watch my show, I'm going to come back and revisit it. And then when I revisit it, I'm going to write out what about this really hurt me. And then that's how we get understanding what our stirb is and then how to work our way out of turning to that stirb. So I know this is a lot of information being thrown at you on grief. My goal is to help you navigate through these challenging times. So I've provided for you a free grief guide handbook. This guide gives over 50 tips on the experience of grief and how to help ourselves and people around us through it. So please download the guide on the link below. It is really helpful to understand this topic since we are not really taught or educated on grief. So I hope this guide will be a useful tool for you. Chemical addiction is a big deal with STURBS. So there's the chemical addiction where we're gonna rely on the alcohol, or the drugs to numb our pain and then and then the vicious cycle is when we do that then we feel shame that we've done that so we have this vicious cycle that happens we have a loss that we've experienced and then when we use that misinformation to deal with that loss it just shoved that pain back down right so now we're going to turn to something because this hurts too much so then we rely on that chemical to bring some numbing or some comfort or some escape and then when we come out of that now we're going to feel shame and then when we feel shame that just adds to our loss like now it becomes compounded loss and now we're going to feel alone because of the shame no one's going to understand why i did what i did and so now we've just created this vicious cycle where we've just added to our loss and now i'm going to use that misinformation again and now i'm going to turn to that even more and then it's going to make me feel shame the person that's going through that particular loss what they haven't stop to acknowledge is how much pain they're in and there might even be shame in just feeling that particular loss that they've experienced maybe they've already been shamed about it like you're not handling it right you should be more grateful whatever whatever that might be whatever that might be said if they've felt like they haven't been able to handle it properly then they're going to turn to something to numb it because they don't know what else to do and then you have the person doesn't understand why they're to turning to it like you should just be able to get over it you should be able to control your emotions so again it's these vicious cycles that we start getting into that we don't feel heard by the other person and we don't know how to talk about it because when we talk about it we still don't feel heard by the person so that's why you know it is important that you understand why you're turning to something get open just even with yourself even if you feel like you can't talk to another person right now you can write it out journaling it's medicine it really does help you get out all the junk that's inside of you and help you process help you work through a lot that i'm not going to say you're not going to be still want to go numb yourself what i'm saying is little steps can make all the difference in the world so even if you just start there just journaling and writing things out recognizing when you're turning to something like a substance to numb that pain so there's that chemical dependency but there's also the dependency on even prescription medication whether it's antidepressants or anxiety medication and i'm not saying people don't need to take those from at times it's when we're dependent on them when your anxiety kicks in and you turn to the pill first instead of recognizing and being honest truthful like why am i feeling anxious trying to understand where my anxiety is coming from and again i'm not saying that some people genuinely need it but there's still even if you're needing to take antidepressants there's still understanding what's driving the depression understanding what losses you're experiencing that's causing the depression to kick in so when we rely on the drugs to just make us feel better all we did was really just put a numbing band-aid on it it didn't change anything so you still want to pay attention to why why am i turning to these things so i can start healing and working my way out 
of the dependency. And I do want to say there are absolutely medically diagnosed people with depression, with anxiety disorders, and medication is absolutely helpful and needed. So I don't want to minimize that at all because those things are very important. It's again discovering the whys and it's that whether you take the medication because it's prescribed to you or not, we still have to discover the whys. Like why am I there to help work ourselves through or get professional help to work through whatever is driving the anxiety that it, it shouldn't just be 100% rely on a medication, but if I'm on medication, I also want help in understanding what's driving my anxiety. So it's a holistic help and not just rely on one thing and think that that's gonna be your whole life, but take a holistic care and approach to your mental health. So now you know a little bit more about short-term energy relieving behaviors. In my next video, we're gonna talk about different types of loss. So watch this video and I'll see you over there.